We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. Uh, okay, so to respect everyone's time, uh, I would like to begin with the session. A very good morning, a good afternoon, good evening to our global audience, whoever has joined us from uh, different time zones across the globe. And uh, today uh, in this town hall session number 63 of tackling the menace of e-waste, which is electronic waste through greener waste, we have some uh, very erudite uh, participants and as well as our esteemed speakers joining us. So uh, I would like to introduce uh, the speakers to you. Uh, firstly, we have uh, Monmi Barua uh, joining us from the United Nations Sustainable uh, Development Solution Network Youth uh, Platform. She is also associated with the Energy and Resource Institute in India and has done uh, considerable work in the field of environment. She will be sharing uh, her wisdom in the field of environment and man uh, environmental management aspect today. Then uh, we have uh, Daniel, who is an associate professor specializing in the field of information technology and uh, also teaching uh, environmental uh, management uh, as a subject at the University Das Miranas in Philippines. Uh, then we have uh, Robert. I hope he will be joining us soon. So Robert has some technical issues. So Robert uh, has an entrepreneurial uh, background and he represents the organization of the Environmental Shield. And uh, last but not the least, we have uh, Martha Masidulowska joining us from Youth IGF Poland team. And she is also the youth coordinator of Project Youth Summit uh, associated uh, with uh, women in artificial intelligence and a student herself. Uh, she has been uh, keenly observing the uh, work of environment uh, uh, domain uh, from the youth perspective and will be sharing her inputs uh, for the same today. So uh, to just uh, set the context, I would just uh, it's, hope you all can see my screen. Uh, can someone confirm on the same? Yeah, we can see. So I hope you, uh, my screen is visible to all. So here is the agenda for the session. So uh, to give a brief of the session, uh, this uh, electronic uh, e-waste has become a global problem and with the current pandemic scenario, the revenue of electronics markets has uh, like shooted up like anything and it has uh, still expected to grow with a uh, annual growth rate, growth rate of over 4.5% uh, resulting in a projected volume of uh, more than uh, 500 uh, million uh, uh, US dollars uh, in the uh, till uh, 2025. So as such, there is a wide need uh, to observe the quantity of EVS generation globally and to tackle it in sustainable uh, ways. We have to come up with innovative circular models. Now to discuss about these circular models, we have our panelists who will uh, cite examples or case study from their regional perspective, will also brief us, brief us about their uh, associations uh, I hope everyone is able to hear me. Yes, yes, we are. Okay. So, yeah, so today we have our panelists. So what we will do is that we will go in a round table we format. We can't, we can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, is there any problem? Uh, just a minute. From my side, I can hear you. I hope that everybody else can hear you. Hi, I yes, can uh, we you. can hear. So uh, thank you, Robert, for joining. Uh, so there seem to be some technical issues. So I was just giving the brief uh, of the session and thankfully we have you now. So we have all the speakers. Uh, so I was just setting the agenda and you have just arrived at the right time. So I will just share my screen again. And uh, we will soon start with, uh, with our deliberations of the agenda. So let me just share the presentation again. So
so yes uh, so i have uh, already briefed uh, about uh, these speakers and we have included your name uh, we have given a brief of uh, who all have joined us as speakers and regarding the repertoireing and moderation i uh, have joined from youth coalition on internet governance uh, martha is there as a speaker as well as uh, uh the on site uh, moderator so if uh, any issue crops up we can uh, anybody at on site get reach to martha and she is a very helpful person and she will definitely address to it and lastly we have nicolas who would be repeating about the session and making notes uh, for taking the action points so setting the agenda i was just giving a brief about the electronic uh, market uh, globally and uh, what impact it can hold in terms of generating a large amount of uh, electronic waste and uh, uh, together with this uh, different questions have been prepared for the panelist uh, in which uh, they will introduce themselves they will talk about the be best practice best practices management approaches or uh, relevant case studies in the from their regional uh, point of view uh, which can be uh, taken to solve uh, menace of e waste so they will be citing unique uh, innovative circular business model examples as well or their experiences in the field of environment with sustainable development goals and then we will uh, in the end of the at the end of the session take uh, some action items and see how we can replicate the same to solve this uh, problem of uh, electronic waste so we have a large uh, audience uh, today comprising of the youth and uh, that is why our uh, agenda is all, uh, one of the agenda is how youth can be an enabler to tackle this uh, menace of e waste and thankfully all the speakers have been uh, associated in advocating for the youth or amplifying the voices of youth at different forums in their different capacities and that is why i'm hope very hopeful that we will have some good inputs from the team so uh, without uh, any further ado we i we would like to move to our first questions like uh, i have said enough uh, in praising all of you now it's uh, i would like to hear from you like what has been your background in terms of work in the environment sector like what background you come from what has been your association and uh, in the light of achieving net zero impact on climate change what has been your contributions or uh, how can we be motivated to hear from you so over to my steam panel uh maybe i can uh, uh, request daniel uh, being a professor to share some of the inputs uh, and uh, break the ice so over to you daniel hi uh, daniel are you there can you hear me yeah hi can you hear me yes yes we can hear you yeah um, thank you happy um glad to meet you everyone um i am dr dangan and i i work for um a doctorate and masters program in the university and i'm part of um internet society philippines chapter as um vice president for technology so um this topic is is one of the many facets that we have been um um involved with in the policy and of course in um internet governance um for years i have been involved in research collaborations on technologies that can reduce carbon emissions using internet of things infrastructure um blockchain framework technology solutions intelligent and embedded systems um usually deployment utilizes solar powered technology and um utilizing renewable energy domain such that i have been doing consultancy works with some organizations to improve um their business processes and transition their manufacturing and industrial processes um towards minimal use of gas and to help the service sector reduce its sectoral emission thank you okay nice to hear from you daniel since you uh, covered uh, different themes that you have been associated with so you 
also said you have been uh, working on the aspect of how industry can contribute uh, to the field of environment and different aspects of how United Nations or other NGOs could be an enablers to take this ahead. So on this note, maybe I would like to uh, call upon uh, Robert, who comes from an entrepreneurial uh, background. So Robert, uh, I would give the floor to you to uh, enlighten us on what kind of work you have been uh, associated with for the environment sector and how your vision is for achieving a net zero impact on climate change. So over to you, Robert, if you can speak. Oh, yes, yes, uh, Atif, um, thank you so much. I hope that my, uh, I hope that my bandwidth is strong enough to hold the video. And if it is not uh, holding, then you'll advise me to uh, turn it on or turn it off and be, uh, so that I can be on audio. So yes, my name is Robert Riachira. Yes, I'm Robert Riachira. Uh, I am the Deputy Executive Director of the Environment Shield. Unlike uh, how you have uh, in introduced me, I'm not from a private sector, I'm actually from civil society. Uh, the Environment Shield is a civil society organization and uh, we have been largely involved in advocacy, uh, activism for uh, uh, sustainable investments uh, and, and, and responsible uh, corporate accountability, ensuring that there is a, you know, observance of the environment and, and conservation. And what we have been doing largely is to promote uh, the implementation of sustainable development goals, uh, because as uh, most, uh, you said most of our young people who are online, uh, they are aware that uh, right now the United Nations is implementing Agenda 2030, which is uh, uh, you know a, a global program aimed at uh, you know transforming our world. And for us as the Environment Shield, we have been trying to see how we mainstream uh, SDGs, especially Planet S. Talking about SDG 14, which is uh, life, uh, life uh, underwater, and then SDG uh, 15, uh, which is life on, on land. So we have been trying to make sure that we mainstream those SDGs uh, to the realization of uh, uh, especially uh, young people participating, but also uh, approaching uh, in the local communities. So that has been very important. But also very importantly, um, uh, Atif, is the issue of that we've been looking at is championing the issue of climate change. First of all, creating awareness, but also making sure that our people understand the legal framework, which is aimed at championing uh, uh, environmental sustainability, uh, conservation, issues of uh, uh, climate mitigation and adaptation, but also looking at how do we use nature-based solution to uh, push for uh, climate justice and uh, uh, you know, promoting resilience especially at the grassroots level, where uh, local communities can get involved in uh, championing for climate sustainability. And of course, uh, Atif, because of the issue of the internet being in the fourth industrial revolution, we have seen most young people utilizing the internet. And the fact is that uh, right now, there are a number of uh, you know, uh, issues to do with e-waste. Uh, e e e uh, and uh, unlike, for example, the traditional uh, plastic pollution, you know, greenhouse gases, issues of, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, deforestation, which are so much in the traditional environmental degradation. But also we see increase in uh, uh, issues of, uh, you know, e-waste and, and which needs to be uh, managed, especially the fact that here in Africa, at if I wanted to know that Africa contributes just about three to 4% of, 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 of the global emissions. And, 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 and largely, why when, for example, there's importation of, for example, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, refrigerators, old cars, which so much do a lot of radio, radioactive emissions. And, and I think that as, as you have brought to the topic, this discussion is timely, that we are going to involve young people to participate meaningfully in how they can uh, look at e-waste e management. Because the truth is that the, the, uh, the, in the fourth industrial revolution, which is a digital revolution, where most of us are involved, it is not going to stop, it's going to continue. And therefore, I think that out of this discussion, as you said, we shall be able to come up with, you know, uh, court actions, resolutions that are aimed at e-waste management, which is already a menace, as you have put it. As we are grappling with the traditional, uh, you know, uh, environmental degradation, we also have 
a big, big challenge where we have a lot of emissions, uh, radioactive, uh, you know, uh, uh, activities. And, and I think this discussion is going to help us to forge a direction uh, together. Thank you very much, Ativ. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Robert, on uh, enlightening us and also clarifying that you come from a civil society organization. So uh, you're, it's very uh, motivating to learn about uh, how your organization is involved in the different themes of work covering different uh, sustainable development goals, like you mentioned, like uh, SDG 14 or be it uh, covering SDG 12. So on the note uh, of uh, these uh, sustainable development goals, a lot of work has been done uh, in India or Asia Pacific region as well. So this is, I believe, the right time to call upon our esteemed panelists we have with us. So Monmi, uh, uh, I would like to now invite you uh, to share some uh, light on how you have been uh, associated with the environment sector, uh, especially with the Energy and Resource Institute and now with the SDS and Youth Network also. And since we have a lot of youth uh, among us, so it would be, uh, we look forward to your inputs on the same. So Thank over you. to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Adif. Mm -hmm. It's an honor to be here. I'm uh, very excited to, you know, be a part of this platform. And, you know, like you mentioned, um, youth sector is very important as, you know, we believe and uh, we know we have experienced as well, you know, they see things from a very different perspective and, uh, you know, think out of the box uh, in order to find solutions. As uh, given my background, uh, as, uh, as uh, Mr. Atif has mentioned that, uh, you know, I work uh, with uh, Terry, that is called the Energy and Resources Institute. And it's an independent and multidimensional organization with uh, capabilities right from say research, policy, uh, you know, consultancy and implementation. It has in fact, you know, pioneered conservations and action in the energy environment and, uh, you know, climate change and uh, sustainability space for over four decades now. And um, out of, you know, many environment issues, our uh, focus is also on waste which and e-waste, which, which is the topic for today. And, you know, um, I mean, we do, the focus is, you know, we do it through, you know, creating technologies and solutions that uh, minimizes waste generation and, you know, convert all waste into useful products. Um, this includes initiatives, say, to promote a circular economy through research, uh, resource efficient or, you know, uh, cleaner production in industries or to maximize resource recovery and, uh, you know, recycling for landfill. So out of this, there are, you know, few examples that I, uh, I mean, I want to state. Also, um, I, 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 I mean, apart from, uh, you know, Terry, I am also a part of the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Solutions Network and the Youth Network. So um, to give a background, this uh, network was set up in 2012 uh, under the auspices of the, you know, U UN Secretary General. Uh, SDSN, which is the uh, short form, it uh, mobilizes uh, global expertise to promote uh, practical solutions for sustainable development. Uh, the network, uh, you know, it, it, it brings about, it leverages global scientific and the technological uh, expertise to, in fact, promote practical problem solving for sustainable development right from, you know, local, national and uh, reaching to global scales. Um, so, you know, today SDSN has around uh, one, I think more than 1500 members, 30 national networks and 12 regional networks. So one of the regional networks, uh, that is the, we have, uh, you know, many uh, like 12 uh, regional networks. So out of that, one of them is uh, hosted by the Energy and Resources Institute, which is in New Delhi, where I am also a part of it. And um, it is established in 2014. And, uh, you know, well, I'm the network coordinator for SDS and youth in South Asia. And this is a program under, uh, you know, uh, UNSDSN, which is established in 2015, uh, basically to train and equip young leaders with the, you know, knowledge and resources to build a more sustainable future. So we have, uh, you know, more than 195 volunteers involving one, uh, uh, I think 120 countries and, you know, it, it it uh, it re reaches both to you know local, national, and global uh, levels initiatives as well. So uh, 
SDSN has many, you know, uh, flagship initiatives also, uh, which works for sustainable development goals and, you know, tries to uh, bring about a change. And, you know, we do this, uh, you know, uh, only we try to do it through youth. We believe that, you know, youth are the driving forces. So we try to connect them, uh, you know, uh, basically create awareness. So, I mean, realizing this, that, you know, um, an environmentally conscious society can be, I mean, created only if youth are empowered. So, you know, Terry has a dedicated, uh, you know, area that's called Environment Education Awareness Group, where I work and uh, that, you know, strive towards this, addressing a need for education for sustainable development on different sustainable issues for, uh, you know, achieving a net zero impact on climate change. So one such initiative I would want to state here is the youth climate conflict. I mean, in terms of awareness, and uh, you know where we have been. That's an annual program basically, and it is a you know it's a competitive and an educative mode of action wherein youth from across the country, uh, in I mean, are invited to participate in awareness building. Uh, you know, in sessions. Uh, and to end in deliberations to present their views about, uh, related to climate change. They also get an opportunity to, you know, we try to uh, create youth pledge or youth declaration where youth themselves, you know, play a very important role and they try to build the declaration and they, you know, that's, that comes out right from the, uh, you know, uh, raw data or raw, you know, uh, resources of youth. So, mm -hmm. yeah, in with this, I mean, uh, I would like to mention that, yes, I mean, youth does play a very important role. And, you know, right from start, if we, you know, believe that we youth as a youth, we ha all have, you know, participants, as, you know, Atif has also mentioned that we have, a, uh, I mean, a group of youth part, uh, attending today and are also present here. So, you know, we are the ones who will be, you know, who are the driving forces and who can bring about a change. So thank you so much, Atif. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Monvik. So with this, uh, uh, I would lastly like to move to Martha, who is the youngest panelist and uh, rightly fits the youth bracket. So Martha, over to you. You can share your experience about the background of work you have been witnessing in the field of uh, environment sustainability and uh, climate change or how has your experience been or what your inputs are considering you are also a technologist uh, being uh, like uh, of, uh, associated with women in artificial intelligence network. So we would love to hear from you. And I also request the participants to respect the timeline of two minutes. We are already late on the agenda. So we could quickly like, uh, like to move to three other questions as well. So over to you, Martha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Atif. So I'll be as quick as I can. And I'm super happy to be here with you guys and um, to be uh, among such a experienced already uh, participants. Uh, well, my experience started actually just before pandemic when I uh, participated in Digital Economy Youth Summit in Cambridge, where with other participants, we actually were focused not maybe on ICT problems, but uh, fast fashion and how to tackle the problem with fast fashion with taken uh, with uh, technology with blockchain and and uh, and AI and um, shortly after that we established the, the Polish chapter of youth IGF and uh, seeing uh, last year's edition of IGF we decided that probably the the problem that needs to be uh, resolved is the problem of uh, Mm, the impact of internet and ICT on environment or how internet ha can actually help so hold the digital uh, sustainability movement let's say and also because I started to be interested in that uh, I uh, participated in, uh, in ITU project where uh, we uh, when, where I was in ICT uh, problem let's say group and we were trying to to discuss e-waste so as you mentioned, I'm also a member of Women in AI, but I'm definitely not a technologist. I would uh, consider myself more of a person from civil society as I am, uh, as I have a legal background. 
more. Um, but uh, being a member of Women in AI made me think that actually with all this, I see the, with all this uh, internet related sectors, we can um, combine them, we can see the two, two problems. Like for, on one hand, AI can uh, help in measuring the, the impact or in helping resolving the, the e-waste problem, or it can also produce the problem, produce, uh, produce the waste uh, because it's uh, produces uh, it takes a lot of electricity for example but ai as i said can be used for example to censor and monitor the fullness of trash uh, uh, in the cities as well as as well as it can uh, uh, sort uh, sort four times faster the the trash uh, rather than a human being so uh, uh, I'm just, as you said, I'm the youngest, so I'm here more to uh, show uh, that my personal perspective, I don't have that big background, but I'm super happy to uh, to hear from you guys also. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martha. So you mentioned uh, you covered uh, quite an array of uh, subjects uh, to your uh, speech uh, with the engaging speech and you still have a bright career and I, we hope that you would contribute for the cause of environment as well. So as you mentioned your association with the International Telecommunication Union which is the ITU. So just on that note I would like to mention that ITU in our research uh, uh, stated that around 53.6 million uh, metric tons of uh, electronic waste was consumed by the consumers all over the globe in uh, 2019. And the 2020 report is also to be yet to be announced. And uh, considering this report, we, I move to the next question, uh, which is uh, as the quantity of this huge amount of e-waste generation is rising globally, what sustainable uh, practices or ways have you in your field of work or in your research or your associations through global networks that you mentioned have observed which can reduce this effect on of electronic waste on the environment. So maybe uh, uh, anyone is uh, uh, up for the to take this question up. Maybe we can ha uh, have a say from uh, Robert this time. So Robert, what uh, specific uh, practices have you seen maybe from a regional perspective, if you can share, or uh, sustainable waste practices that your organization, the Environment Shield, is doing, which is remarkable in the field of environment, which can have uh, a reducing effect for e-waste. So you are free to share in those aspects of your work. So over to you, Robert. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Atif. I want to salute uh, my fellow panelists because uh, it's very clear that the panelists were chosen, uh, you know, depending on the experience that we all have. And, and personally, I'm very, uh, very, very honored to be part of this engagement. And, and to go to the question you are asking, in the first place, let us first appreciate the situation that we are dealing with at TIF. Uh, what we are advancing for is the issue of how do we achieve uh, a circular economy? Because what we are having right now, you know, uh, is, is a global movement towards, uh, you know, issues of how do we use and reuse and recycle, okay? How do we engage in that direction? And, and, and that is very critical. And, and, and the, the, the principle of the clean development mechanism, I am happy that Martha talked about issues of clean, how do we use clean energy? And, and, and you see that, yes, we are pushing, there's, there's a, a shift into artificial intelligence. You know, you have all these things of advancement into robotics and all that, yes, that kind of revolution, the use of technology, it is very good. But let me show you something. And, and I want to speak from the, uh, from the perspective of Africa, you know, from an African perspective. As I already told you in the first session that Africa, you know, how much does Africa contribute to the global emissions? The statistics show that it's about 4% of, of the contribution. And, and we all know that the biggest contributor right now, the biggest contributor of climate change at the moment are what you call the greenhouse gases. And what are the, what are the sources of greenhouse gases? The source is uh, you know, industrialization. So for me as Robert, who has been involved at the front line of, of pushing for climate justice, of pushing for uh, you know, environmental sustainability, this is what I would recommend. That the, as a global yes. community, especially our young people who are really participating in this, we must look at it, we must look at this issue in a broader perspective, in a sense that uh, if you are going to have a clean economy, 
green economy, then it means that, uh, you know, the perspective that we are going to have is that how do we use our environment in a sustainable manner? And that will involve now responsible disposal of the waste products. How do we responsibly dispose of? And in the first place, uh, Atif, we shall have to look at the legal framework. I already told you, look at, the, for example, the Paris Agreement. The Paris Agreement is very comprehensive. The Paris Agreement brings to the fore, one, that every country must have what they call the nationally determined contributions. All right? So we and do have a policy have question. A Just to interrupt you, Robert, here. So we have a dedicated policy question yes. in the question three. But I'm very happy to hear from the regional perspective that you stressed upon. And uh, to uh, because yes. lastly, we would like to keep it interactive. Now I would like to move uh, to uh, Monmi. Uh, if uh, Monmi, you can highlight any, uh, you know, flagship uh, program of the UNSDSN network or uh, the Energy and Resource Institute or what impact uh, it had or what kind of numbers it uh, achieved. Uh, it can be of uh, e-waste generation, but it can be related to other mobility programs related to environment from which inspiration can be taken and similar e-waste uh, uh, control programs, uh, management programs can be rolled out. So look forward to hear on the, those lines from you. Thank you. Thank you, Bhattif. I will make it short right now. Um, I think, uh, you know, India is the country in South Asia to have a specific legal framework, you know, for handling e-waste since 2011. However, you know, like you also have mentioned that the e-waste production has uh, risen almost, uh, you know, 2.5 times, I think, in six years uh, to 2019. And um, also, you know, all thanks to the pandemic uh, that, you know, uh, the tools have transformed into uh, learning spaces, into digitized uh, mediums to reach out to a larger sections of its target group. And also that, you know, e-waste uh, uh, generation has become uh, more, uh, has been increasing. So, you know, there is an, definitely an urgency to increase the efforts on, uh, you know, improvement of the current uh, practices, be it, the, be it in the, you know, collection schemes or the management practices. Um, I mean, to reduce the uh, trade of, you know, uh, generation of e-waste, I would say. So one, I mean, I for me, I believe that all we have been doing, you know, that increasing, uh, say, informative campaigns or capacity building or awareness is very critical to promote environment-friendly e-waste management programs. So one such, uh, you know, example I would give specifically in terms of uh, waste generation uh, is this project that uh, we do. Uh, that is for you know uh, schools and college uh, schools specifically. It's called Project Surge. That's the sensitization. It, st uh, it stands for sensitization and education and awareness on recycling for a cleaner habitat. And uh, the project was implemented in 2019 to 16. And you know, apart from workshops and capacity buildings and competitions, uh, you know. Uh, the project was focused on waste and, you know, specifically on SDG 12. However, you know, uh, the schools actually, they were designated as the waste collection point. So where, uh, you know, in a way, uh, we were able to actually, you know, uh, collect a waste of around uh, 25 tons. And uh, this, this waste was actually sent to the recycling, uh, you know, mills and were converted into notebooks CD covers, bookmarks, and you know, uh, roofing sheets. So you know, this is this is what we feel as an achievement. And apart from that, it you know, the project also uh, you know because it was in various other various locations in India, in uh, right from north, south, east, west. We covered almost all the uh, uh, you know uh, regions in India, and uh, it's it reached out to many number of you know students and teachers, and also the community members. So we definitely we try to you know bring about a, a change and of course I mean it cannot happen uh, you know overnight it will take time but uh, definitely we feel that you know this was this was I would feel one of the achievement and uh, this actually helped you know like uh, I for me uh, you know that uh, capacity building or awareness is actually, you know, uh, it does bring about a behavioral change in the youth and this is how we can take it forward.
Thank you so Thank much, Monmi. So that was a, a very good remark on how pro your Project Surge, uh, the flagship uh, program of uh, youth SDSN, uh, made a change. And on those lines, I believe there is an urgent uh, need for quality education in terms of uh, uh, what can be done for the cause of environment. And a lot of NGOs have been coming up with innovative models of gamification, introducing new circular models where they have started campaigns. Uh, but also a lot of need uh, is there to bring about uh, changes in education, quality education, which it itself is a separate sustainable development goal. So with this, I would quickly like to move to Daniel because he comes from an academic background. And Daniel, you could let us know what kind of uh, quality education frameworks uh, the academy institutions have come up with in order to, you know, tackle uh, problems like this of e-waste or have you seen any uh, changes in curriculum over the few years, last few years where the subject has been stressed upon or what kind of uh, behavioral changes as Monmi also mentioned uh, being witnessed among students. So if you can shed some light from the academy point of view, it we would be very happy to take that as a point of action. Over to you, Daniel. Thank you, Atis and Monmi. Um, yeah. Um, based on the theoretical and conceptual underpinnings of um, green computing principles as part of uh, the curriculum that are being taught right now in some of the academic institutions. Um, and looking at how our graduates learn from the curriculum and translate their learnings in industries, um, we, we've learned that we, we don't need to revolutionize um, the organization, the company. Um, instead, you can adopt the green computing principles or the philosophy of a green use, disposal, design, and manufacturing. Um, green use involves actually optimizing the tools and products that you use to minimize energy consumption. And with the, with the onslaught of COVID-19 pandemic, it has unmasked the capabilities of all, um, if not all, um, almost all of the organizations all over the world. And those organizations which had been um, embarked um, towards digital transformation are actually the, the e-waste um, polluter also. Um, was able to, to do corporate strategy, how to, um, to use green design, um, looking at uh, enabling power management features, um, powering down at the end of the day. And some companies have subscribed to um, um, outsource services. So instead of putting on data centers, um, they're going to outsource um, services like communication services for um, like Zoom, um, Google Meet, et cetera, um, just to reduce um, operational cost and of course, carbon emission from the facility having had another data center. And in the green disposal, um, limiting the amount of um, e-waste being disposed, I'm looking at how um, they can develop policy. Well, it's actually about corporate strategy on policy um, as to um, reconsidering is the uh, procurement. So, uh, just to uh, uh, intervene here, so uh, Daniel, we will come to the policy question next, which is a dedicated segment, and we'll have this quick comment from you. So, it's very good to hear about the industry collaboration with the uh, in sync with the research institutions and academy institutes where they can yeah. leverage uh, the power of uh, you know uh, education and research and development uh, to steer the work in the in terms of reducing e-waste generation and like the methodologies you mentioned or uh, the work can be replicated across the globe so with this i would like to move to uh, martha with some quick comments on how she has uh, seen the quantity of e-waste generation rising in her 
uh, locality or maybe what best practices in terms of uh, innovative circular models like uh, the poly say the uh, methodology of three uh, reduce reuse recycle has this been a practice in the uh, european countries she has been in or in poland or what work she has seen which she was inspired with or and how does she envision that uh, effort effect of e-waste could be reduced uh, from a regional perspective uh, so over to you martha just a quick comment or two would be appreciated thank you all right i'll be uh, super quick then so i would like to uh, distinguish here two dimensions because one dimension is that uh, in european countries we have like a double perspective one is european one and the other is like a national approach to certain regulations so uh, for example as far as i know there is a right that allow the the consumer to to give the old ict uh, device back when you are buying a new one in a shop but for example in some countries the it lacks the regulation upon what to do when you are buying something online as we know right now everyone is buying everything online so uh, it's kind of a problem and what to do when for example there uh, someone is delivering you your stuff so as far as i know i did a small research i really like the the dutch uh, what the what the what the in netherlands they did with that so when you are uh, when you are ordering with delivery you can match uh, in an certain form that you want to while someone is for example giving you a laptop you can give them back the same uh, of course the same type of ict so uh, if you are being given a laptop if you bought a laptop then you have to give computer as well if you're buying a, a telephone then telephone not like you're buying a telephone someone and you can give back the tv for example and so this is one thing which I really like about the, the Dutch law. But the other thing is also that in different countries, we can observe totally different approach to uh, to environmental issues and to, to stuff like that. Because as, as I know, actually Poland has one of the lowest percent when it comes to the amount of waste per person in Europe, which is uh, super surprising for me. Um, and uh, we have a great US collection. But for example, as uh, as I know, uh, in Italy there is a pro there was a problem recently with the definition of e waste that uh, it's uh, it wasn't that that sure, and someone was uh, some uh, someone was selling the materials to other countries, uh, for example in Africa, the the things that should be uh, considered as e waste. So we have some similar problems with uh, making it all equal, but it's probably because uh, we have totally different mentalities in in different countries. So thanks. That's really nice to hear those kind of uh, behavioral changes and uh, the points you mentioned from European perspective and to hear that Poland is among the least contributed to it. So I hope that same uh, mindset can be adopted with other countries as well. So with this, I would uh, now like to move to our next segment, which is uh, uh, for uh, policymakers. Like, is there any best practice or suggestion uh, you would want to raise to policymakers for reducing the impact of e-waste or pollution? on environment from a regional perspective so i had cut uh, robert on this so robert i would like to uh, invite you and uh, sorry for uh, uh, cutting you short on the policy aspect because now i would like to uh, take uh, one or two minutes of you to explain how uh, those best practices or suggestions at uh, ngo level uh, you kind of amplified it to the policy framework uh, uh, level in your country uh, which can be adopted globally as well and how we can impact, uh, make an impact on environment through that. So over to you, yeah, Robert. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Atif. And I, I think you are really doing an incredible job <laughs> moderating us uh, in, in, in the first place. Um, and, and you see that there's something that is coming out from the participants, uh, that at the end of the day, this, this all ends up with the policy makers. Uh, because you see that there is a generally goodwill, you know, uh, for example, if I can give an example here in Uganda and generally Africa, there's a goodwill from the citizens as far as issues of e-waste management is concerned. Of course, as I already had connected, uh, trying to bring in place the issue of, uh, you know, the Paris Agreement, which is an international instrument, at least aimed at dating uh, issues of e-waste management. And in Uganda, we also have a, 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 you know, a comprehensive legal framework. Uh, the National Environment Act, uh, the recently uh, passed uh, Climate Change Act, which are very, very clear about issues of uh, e-waste management and disposal. And I can tell you, Atif and our dear participants, that uh, at the end of the day, the, 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 uh, the, the government 
is the biggest duty bearer in all this because they are the ones in charge of implementation of the policies. And, but also, I, I want to say that there needs to be, uh, you know, there needs to be partnership. You know, if you are going to achieve some of these, uh, you know, recommendations, there should be partnership. We need to have the private sector, which is the biggest, you know, uh, player in all this, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, e-waste management drive. The private sector is very critical. We must bring it on board. And, and of course, also us who are involved in the civil society, uh, we're also trying to do uh, our work by speaking out, amplifying the voices. But I think that we need to do more, especially when it comes to real tangible solutions. I can tell you, um, you saw what Daniel raised uh, when it comes to uh, you know uh, the, 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 the challenges at the moment, uh, when especially with uh, you know policy implementation. Let me tell you something. We need to look at how do we, uh, for example, uh, achieve some of these green innovations. It must be deliberate effort at a policy level that we have green jobs because the green economy can only be achieved, as you have already, already said, using the structural approach where there is a use, reuse, and what. And, and for me, I would want to recommend that there should be increase in financing towards that direction. There must be finance, deliberate financing towards the e waste management. And I can tell you, uh, Atif, that the whole discussion must be centered, and this, that's what we've been involved in as the Environment Shield, championing policies, e-waste management policies that are human rights based, in, that have a human face, looking at the situation that at the end of the day, these environmental issues are human rights issues. And, and, and they must be uh, aimed at how do we have a sustainable planet? How do we champion issues to do with the uh, you know, responsible disposal of some of these. Let me tell you something. For us in Uganda, the National Environment Act prohibits irresponsible dumping of some of these e-waste products. I have already told you that one of the biggest things that we are facing here in Africa is because look at, for example, our internet penetration, our digital penetration is just about 26%. You know, so the, 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 the people, the Africans, have not reached a level of being big internet consumers. But the biggest challenge we are having are, you know, where Africa is a dumping site, where you find that there are all these old cars, old refrigerators, you know, old laptops, used products. They are just dumped here in Africa. And most of them actually emit these radioactive, uh, you know, substances, which are uh, lead to accumulation of e-wastes. So for me, I think going forward, we, we need to look at a, a broader perspective. How do we achieve, for example, issues do with smart homes, smart houses, you know? Uh, you know, digitizing, the, how do we push a responsible and sustainable digital vision? Because you see, there has been a, an embracing of the digital revolution, which is very good. Of course, as, 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 a, as a matter has said, you know, look at issues to do with, uh, with, with, with Zoom. I think we are just, uh, just to cut you short here. Uh, that is, so we yes. have heard uh, like quite uh, f so many things from you about sectoral approaches, about finances, and these are some great uh, inputs that we have got, but due to the uh, scope of this session and you to uh, respect the time of everyone i would now like to uh, move on uh, with the the panel so uh, thank you robert for your inputs uh, so this uh, puts me in a position to wrap it up uh, with the merging of two questions so marta i would like to move to you since you come from a legal background and you have already shared one best practice about the replacement strategy of uh, electronic consumer goods that you mentioned about uh, is being practiced in poland and you would like uh, people to adopt so which is a, a very good methodology and can be kept under the umbrella of 3r policy or the reduce reuse and recycle now my question to you is like what one uh, suggestion you would have for policymakers in terms of advocating for the field of uh, environment, how pollution can be reduced from a legal aspect, and how do you envision youth can be uh, a focal point uh, in this activity? How can uh, the youth, uh, you know, I am just merging the last question with you so, uh, due to the time. Uh, so what best policy can be recommended and how youth can be an enabler to achieve that policy for uh, tackling the challenges like e-waste? So quickly uh, to you. Martha. 
Okay, I'll try to be as quick as I can. So as I said at the beginning, I, I really believe that technology should be a tool to solve problems caused by another technology. So for example, uh, from my uh, perspective and from my uh, little but still some experience, I really believe that blockchain, for example, allows to have a look into whole ICT cycle and whole process of both producing and what's going on with the with certain products. So it also, as it gives you the whole perspective so you can see how it was produced and stuff, it also gives you a power to control it uh, and that's what we actually need so uh, i really believe that all processes should be available through this through blockchain technology and therefore also to be as understandable for producers users and recyclers so for everyone but when it comes to the youth for your fourth question uh, it's super not related with what i said just now because uh I really believe, uh, and I also relating to what I said in the beginning about, about fashion, uh, it might sound a little bit odd that I'm saying that, but right now we have a, a big uh, secondhand movement. So everyone believes that uh, what was before and what is vintage is fashionable and trendy. And uh, starting from that, uh, starting from mind of, of one person, we can really make an impact. So what I'm trying to address here is that let's make old ICT uh, trendy i don't know if it's uh, if you understand what i'm talking about but uh, to really make an impact you we have to con uh, to uh, tell the others that actually you don't need new telephone you don't need a new laptop you can just repair the old stuff and still use it because why because everyone is doing that why is everyone doing that because it's a trend i know it's maybe simple but i really believe that something like that can make a change I think that is a great uh, input uh, to bring about a behavioral change and make th making things trendy or fashionable for that uh, green mindset. I think that can be a good action point. So thank you, Martha. So over to uh, you, Monmi, and the same question uh, to you as well. What uh, do you, the different uh, kind of projects you have been involved with for uh, reducing pollution or advocating changes uh, through the youth, what uh, one policy level change you would like to recommend and how do you think uh, youth can be an enabler or you know uh, contribute to that change or raise uh, its voice to uh, the policy level so okay. it would thank be great you. yes yeah. thank you Atif. and i'll also you know i know time is uh, very short right now we are running out of time and adding to martha first of all i mean Yes, I think the difference between need and want is what we need. I mean, what is the you know need of the hour, I would say that, you know, this particular basically, you know, consumer awareness that we know that, okay, we do not want a particular thing and we know the specific difference between the terms need and want where, you know, want is basically, you know, wanting something which might not be needed, but need is definitely, you know, something which is you know, you can't live without. So that difference is uh, very important. And uh, yeah, I mean, India, you know, for policymakers, I would say India is, I mean, India generated the third highest volume of e-waste. So definitely, you know, the government have to, you know, work on some, uh, you know, incentive mechanism. And uh, from each individual, I would say it's the consumer awareness that, you know, they can do, they can work upon and each individual does bring a lot of, you know, change. And uh, regarding a fourth question uh, that is on youth, how youth plays a uh, bigger role or a, a wider role. So, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, you know, youth, I mean, we realize that our stakes are high. So it is, you know, only through action, however little or big, we can, uh, you know, make this change. And uh, in fact, youth has the, you know, utmost ability and the potential to compete with any individual of any group. So, and therefore, you know, going with everything going digital right now, going through the challenges of e-waste, uh, this, this has been, you know, one of the main influencers. So youth actually, you know, they do play a significant role as the, you know, building blocks of the society and have the, you know, potential and the charisma to effect a change in the, uh, you know, status quo of the society. And, uh, you know, lastly, I would say education, yes, of course, or, you know, say creating awareness or capacity building can bring about a, you know, fundamental shift in, you know, how we think, we act, and, you know, how we discharge our basic, uh, you know, responsibilities towards one another and the planet. 
So okay, yeah. thanks. Thank thanks. Uh, thank so that was a very good input of uh, quality education again. And lingering back to uh, lastly, my erudite uh, academician, Mr. Daniel. So Daniel, over to you. I interrupted you on the point of uh, policy level changes. So you can just uh, cite out one policy level change and how can youth, uh, since you have been interacting with a lot of young minds at university level, how can they be... Uh, motivated to work in the field of environment to tackle menace like e-waste. So one quick input from you, and then we'll open the floor for questions and we'll take some of the questions if we have. Atif, I'm afraid that we will not have time for uh, for questions because I received from many sources that we are very, uh, uh, like we are really lacking time. So so please uh, just one, uh, one sentence is everyone okay. and we have to finish, I'm sorry. Okay, Thank so you. I understand. So due to the on-site constraints, we have to wrap it up quickly. So just one uh, sentence from you, Daniel, and then we Thank can you, wrap Atif. it up and we can take the questions. Later. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to, to forward the idea of recycling as um, um, revenue generation strategy. However, we have to move away from um, this legacy strategy to reuse and remanufacture strategy. So our youth should be involved in the development of national and regional remanufacturing um, instrument as the way forward, because youth is the enablers of technology and applications, and we must participate in the discussions and dialogues um, so that we can counter um, e-waste acceleration um, locally and globally. Thank you. I think that's a great input to wrap it up. So, uh, Robert, we have already heard about uh, from you about the importance of youth. And uh, again, uh, so since we are running out of time, we have had very valuable inputs from all of you. So, Robert, Martha, Monmi, and Daniel, thank you so much for giving us time today. And uh, uh, since we do not have much time for audience QA, we would uh, we already have speakers' voluntary commitment to foster the aims and goals of the IGF with uh, special reference to environmental sustainable development goals for the next year as well. And we hope through the points of action generated today, we will be able to amplify the voices of youth and what action points can be taken in regard to controlling the menace like e-waste. And we have some very good examples taken from all of you which we will highlight uh, in our background paper. And we will also circulate it through the panel of uh, Youth Coalition of Internet Governance Forum. And if you want to reach out for any specific question, you can, uh, I will share the details of the speakers. You can interact with them and they are very friendly and hopefully uh, they will address your questions. Uh, some of the very uh, encouraging projects uh, or the sites that are mentioned by the speakers like Project Search, or environmental shield a network or the policy network that Daniel also stressed upon or the women in AI network that Martha is also a part of. We will share those details as well with our participants and we can hope to continue the dialogue in this regard to make this environment uh, a far more better place uh, uh, in a consolidated way. So thank you so much uh, and uh, thank you for your time. Uh, just request the panel for a quick uh, photograph of the session. So all, for all the participants, if we can have. And, uh, if you, you can uh, uh, come uh, with your camera, I will just take a quick screenshot and then we can wrap up this session. Uh, so yeah, uh, everybody, if I can see your smiling faces, that would be great. Uh, so yeah, I have captured uh, the beautiful picture uh, and hopefully it will come up with a better environment uh, with less uh, e-waste and uh, though it would be uh, transferred digitally to you, but because we hope to make less burden on environment through a green mindset. And there is a reminder that we have another uh, Youth Coalition on Internet Governance session. Uh, happening like uh, youth in the decision making process. It's happening on Thursday, 9th of December, uh, between 1435 uh, UTC to 1550 uh, UTC. Uh, it will held on site for on site participants in the ballroom B. And for online participants, you can just add it to your uh, calendar in the UN IGF website. And uh, that will be a very good. Uh, session uh, in how youth can amplify its voices and uh, make uh, Atif, we have to finish. Changes. Yeah, thank you. So thank you, technical team. Thank you, everyone. And we are done with the session.
Thank you so much.